Bitcoin getting crushed again. It is now off 16 percent since, since hitting all time highs earlier this month. And uh, keep what happened increasing your, your dollar cost averaging. You know, this should be a core position in a long term portfolio. It's the best performing asset this year again after being the best performing asset last year and the year before. We thought it um, was going to be a platform. Now, when we first started the firm, uh, we had put both artificial intelligence and blockchain technology under the category of next generation internet. And as we were doing our research, uh, many of you might know of Chris Berniski. He was our first analyst, at our crypto analyst. We hired him as a next generation internet analyst. And he started doing some homework, or not homework, research on crypto. And then, and then I couldn't get him to research anything else, you know. <laughs> and he put out a framework for valuing uh, Bitcoin as, as a starting point. And so the platform part of it is the technology part of it, right? We had to fight in the early days uh, the traditional world saying, yeah, I, I get the blockchains, but this Bitcoin, and we're saying, oh man, you know, this is like, th this blockchain would be nothing but a highly inefficient database if it weren't for Bitcoin. Uh, so, uh, but I think, the, I think the, the research world has gotten through that. And the convergence that we see, you know, blockchain and it's going to impact every sector, but we see the intersection of uh, blockchain technology and artificial intelligence, importantly. Any of you hear Jack Dorsey yesterday on uh, the quarterly call, quarterly earnings call? Uh, an analyst asked him, uh, you've got Bitcoin on, on your platform, are you going to be putting other assets, other currencies, other assets on your platform? And uh, he said, nope. And it was a quick no. He said, Bitcoin is the native currency of the internet. Uh, so Square's Cash App, uh, crypto, uh, Bitcoin. One of the reasons I think Jack, who had been studying this for years, did uh, go uh, or, or started studying because he said, I got to get out from under these regulators around the world because, you know, they're not letting Cash App enter Stu in studying Bitcoin. <coughs> I thought, uh, you know, he, he obviously is not surprised by what's happening in El Salvador. His idea is to, through the Bitcoin blockchain, uh, basically infiltrate other, uh, other countries, especially emerging markets, uh, to rescue people from you know, irresponsible monetary regimes and corruption and, you know, really salvage their pur purchasing power and, and enhance their living. I think it's going to be used as a means of exchange, more in emerging markets, right, where the monetary regimes are unstable if they exist at all, right? But then as a store of value in, de in the developed world, a hedge, an insurance policy against uh, seizure of assets, a store of value, you know, 5%. If all of you know the wealthy people in the world did that, that would um, that would add hundreds of thousands of dollars to to Bitcoin's value. I think Bitcoin is it's the first global private monos, monetary system ever, right? Um, when we look at NFTs, uh, is this is the beginning of uh, the first global private property system. Now, uh, you, you can say money is property too. Uh, so there's now, uh, Bitcoin is fungible and uh, NFTs are non-fungible uh, and, uh, and provide the ability to bring real scarcity into the digital uh, asset ecosystem. It's a very interesting phenomenon because in 08, 09, after that crash and near death experience in the financial markets, I remember a lot of us lost a lot of our status symbols um, by, by design. But what's going on now, interestingly, is the emergence of uh, an indication of status in the digital ecosystem. 
So I think the emergence of status for a lot of uh, a lot of millennials is more in the digital space than it is in the physical space. So it, it's an interesting evolution. A whole new world is evolving, and I know many people. Uh, my partner included saying like the NFTs, that's ridiculous. You can just copy them and uh, they don't understand, right, this new world. Yeah. A lot of people are thinking about it, especially now, you know, Jamie Dimon in the day was so against Bitcoin in particular uh, until his daughter converted him, I think. And I'm not even <laughs> sure if he was a full convert to Bitcoin, but because then he issued some JP more. Morgan coin or something. Like that. Um, there's a lot of research, you know, it's interesting. We've uh, talked to a few digital asset um, experts within financial institutions. These are big institutions. The DNA difference is so, so, um, I think in order to learn more about what's going to happen, they can diversify their cash into crypto, as you've seen Square and Tesla and MicroStrategy do. Uh, nothing focuses the mind like taking a risk on it, you know, yeah. and with your cash, which is supposed to be safe. Very few will do it, and the reason they won't is because of our accounting rules. Our accounting rules um, uh, classify crypto on the balance sheet as an intangible asset. Intangible assets can only be written down. So you, if, if the mark to market is on the downside, you have to mark it down. If it's on the upside, you don't mark it up. It doesn't make any sense. And uh, I know the SEC had something to say about that. Uh, warning corporations, make sure you understand what you're doing here if you're gonna diversify some of your cash into, uh, into crypto. So. It's, it's interesting, that's what they should do, yeah. but I think the accounting and regulatory dynamic out there suggests that it will be a while before they do. And what are the headlines blaring right now? Inflation, 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 and the numbers coming out are kind of shocking. I, I will, I will give, give you that. Uh, and we, we knew that inflation was going to be coming out of the coronavirus, supply chain, base effect, that's done, the base effect, but supply chain. I never expected hoarding to now be taking place because of fear of not getting holiday presents, right? So we've got a lot of short-term dyna dynamics that are pushing prices up. I'm gonna harken back to the uh, Yassine's apartment, right? And if you look at millennials, what could be happening is, sure, as they grow wealthier, they'll buy goods and services, which is what it, GDP measures, uh, but maybe digital assets and other assets, you know, uh, equities and so forth. I've never seen a generation like this, actually. And what we're seeing is that GDP probably disappointing. In the second, uh, third, quor third quarter, GDP growth was 2%, much lower than expected. All of that was because of inventories, uh, which is everybody screaming about inventory, so I found that interesting. Real final sales were slightly down. And I'm, I'm beginning to think, could it be if you have the excessive money out there moving into assets, so stocks, bonds, uh, crypto, housing, if you call that an asset, some people do, some people don't, um, then it's not going into GDP, which is, which is, where, which is where you find the measure of inflation, right? Yeah. And so, Velocity, the velocity of money is going down. It's not being turned over into goods and services five times a year. It's going down, and it has been going down since 08, 09. Uh, whereas before, in the 70s, it was going up consistently because people were watching inflation go up and interest rates go up, and they said, let me buy now before they go high, prices go higher. Let me buy now before interest rates go higher. Now we might have a little bit of that going on right now, but it's not uh, it, it's not pervasive. So that's the thinking here. This is this idea that the velocity of money is coming down. Baby boomers have entered their uh, careers for the first time. We're going to be in the bull market for the next 20 years. Well, now we're in the echo of the baby boom. The millennials, 
And we have a, a person, you may know him because he's, in the, he's very involved in the crypto world, Tom <coughs> Lee from Fundstrat. I love him. He is making the call yeah. that we are in a bull market. Now, he's making this call on equities, but I'd say other assets are, as well, especially crypto, uh, because the millennials have entered their um, better earning years. and. Uh, he does not expect uh, the bull market to end until the number of millennials starts to drop. And that, I think, is in 2038. Wow. So that's kind of crazy, isn't it?